Welcome to the You're Not Invisible After 50 podcast. I'm Kiran Kumar, founder and host of You're Not Invisible After 50. Despite the title, you don't have to be over 50 to listen to this podcast. No matter whether you're 25, 45 or 65, we can all learn lessons from each other to help us build a better, more fulfilled life. Come listen to the inspiring stories of all the phenomenal women over 50 who are kicking ass and making an impact. They are not invisible. I'm not invisible and neither are you. So no matter what society says, life doesn't end at 50. In fact, it's just beginning. Welcome to the You're Not Invisible After 50 podcast. I'm Kieran and host of this podcast. We're all about showcasing phenomenal women over 50 who are kicking ass and making an impact. You'll get to hear all the inspiring stories why you don't have to be invisible after 50. So sit back and enjoy the wonderful life story from this week's guest. My guest today is Patrika Darbo. Welcome, Patrika. Hi, everyone. I'm very happy to be here. Um, I, I know I don't. I know I don't look fifty. <laughs> you look um, gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> but I just celebrated my seventy fifth birthday. So, honey, I got a lot to tell you at this particular point. Um, I am an Emmy winning actress. Um, for um, a short, I was the first actress to win the short form Emmy um, here in Los Angeles at the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. I also let me find it here. I was a governor, so if you can see this, yeah. this is a little pen that when you are a governor, you get to get. Um, I've also been in lots of movies, uh, television. I've done voiceover. I was a sheep in Bay. Bye, Ram, you. So I've done a <laughs> lot of things. Uh, I've been around the block several times. I once had a casting de- director tell me when I was 22 years old that I was fat, and probably if I w- didn't lose weight, I would never work in this town. Now I just go... There's a letter called F and there's a letter called U. So he got those from me at this particular point. Don't let anyone ever tell you you can't have your dream. You can have it. You just have to work for it and you have to believe in yourself. Don't let outside voices confuse you. I just love that introduction. I didn't even have to prompt you, Patrika. You just went for it. So thank you for coming on to the You're Not Invisible After 50 podcast. I'm sure this is going to be a really fun interview. So <laughs> let's move on. So in this door, in this podcast, we'll cover your life story, the past, the present. There was a trigger point at 50. And then what the future looks like. So let's start wherever you want to start. Oh, I'm so good wanting to get into this. The past. Let me go back. Let me go back to my past. Um, I, I, I college. I worked on it. Community theater. I worked on my career. Um, my mother said I came out of the womb acting, and called me Sarah Bernhardt for most of my life. <laughs> um, I moved to California when I was twenty-two, and um, I'm not real good at waiting tables. And I would go up to a table and like people going, "Do you want mayonnaise or not?" Because I'm not coming back, ladies. Just tell me right now what you want, and what you don't want. Anyway, they thought it was adorable, but that didn't last too long. <laughs> so, um, I can't I, imagine uh, why. <laughs> so I then uh, I took a job as a credit investigator, which means you filled out an application and then I investigated you, <laughs> whether you could pay your bills or not. I worked my way up for that to being a credit manager that, for a big company. So I was a lady executive with like five people working for me and acting part time. Uh, I've had a lot of dental appointments, but at the same time, I never took a vacation because I used my vacation times if I booked a job. So I didn't want to be taking advantage, but it was still feeding my soul because being an actor is what I really wanted to do. Uh and I was working. I had a good career. I um, worked in the 70s and the 60s. If you've ever seen the Jeffersons or Different Strokes or Give Me a Break, all those shows I did years and years ago. Then I had a gentleman tell me that I was a woman no more than a goat and to never contradict him again. And I went into the president of the company and told him that he had 20 minutes or two weeks, but I was not going to work for that person. And they were lucky that I didn't sue them. 
mm-hmm. because those were inappropriate words. Anyway, he came back to me, he, the president, and said, he doesn't think he can work with you either. So, <laughs> so um, I left that company. And um, that was 1984. And I've worked full time as an actress since then. Uh, so those 20 years that I was working part time and stuff like that, um, I still had an opportunity to feed my soul. Those are the things that want. Don't ever give up on your dream because you need to pay your bills or you need to find a way to find a loophole, go to community theater take classes, do any things like that that keep you going. I met my husband at the Burbank Little Theater, and then we were married on stage at the Golden Mall Playhouse in Burbank, lovely, which is where I live. It was a production called To Tie the Knot, starring me and my husband. And the original story was conceived by our parents, was on our little invitation. So I've been married and I've been married 50 years. Uh, this year. Congratulations. So, um, it, thank you. I, you know what? Uh, marriage is not a hundred, uh, 50%, 50%. It's a 100, 100. Because if you ever have to give up half of yourself, you're entering into a relationship, just half of yourself. So be sure you're best friends and be sure you come in fully as yourself and that he comes in fully as yourself. Don't try to change him. Don't let him try to change you. Work together, love one another, and most importantly, be best friends. I know I'm just raving. Where are we? <laughs> okay, we still on the past. So how did you move on to becoming an a, an actress full time? Tell me that story, that 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 phase. It, it, I had just, it was like on a Tuesday that I this happened and I quit. Then on Wednesday, a friend called me and said, Um, There are some people doing a play at my theater and they lost someone and they would like to really um, have you come and audition. What I didn't know at that time is the person who was auditioning me had said, I don't really care whether she can act or not, but he's going to give us a discount on the theater because it's his friend. Wow. Okay. (laughs) Anyway, so I came, blew them away. I'm not tooting my own horn. You can ask them. I blew them away. That was Del Shores. The play was Cheatin'. Then I went on to it from Cheatin', Daddy's Dying, Sorted Lives, all by the same author, at the same time doing major roles. Um, when I did Daddy's Dying, I got put under contract at ABC, to, um, and that's where I worked on Step by Step for the first year with Suzanne Summers and Patrick Duffy. From there, I went on to doing other things. Um, one of my biggest roles was In the Line of Fire, I am, if you've watched that with Clint Eastwood, I'm the lady in the bank that John Malkovich kills. That kind of prompted other people to see me. Uh, then I got hired in 98 uh, for Days of Our Lives. Mm-hmm. And on de- my first year there, I got an Emmy nomination for my work. Uh, and I, I was known as the full-figured bitch goddess of daytime. And I had this adorable, fabulous, very soapy looking actor, Kevin Spiritus, who played my husband. And he was your typical looking hope um, soap opera star. And when Mm -hmm. I first saw him, I went, oh, my God, they got the wrong person. They don't know who I am (laughs) because I was not your typical soap opera actress um, because of my size primarily. But I always joke that Christian Alfonso is a size O2. I'm the same, but I just have the two, the zero after my two. <laughs> so, so we worked like that. Um, then I was on there for like, what, 10 years. Then I left. Then I came back. Then I left. Then I came back. And um, I just finished a, a great storyline. Uh, and now I'm uh, we're in a, a strike right this moment here. Our writers are on strike. So virtually no one is working. So we're all trying to just get along and get a piece of the pie for the writers Mm -hmm. and the actors will go right after them and they would like a piece of the pie. So right now my career is sort of on hold Mm -hmm. because there's no work. (laughs) There's no work. So how did you manage over like COVID? Because again, over COVID that must have disturbed your career. I think it all, it stopped everything at that point. Um, For an actor, our insurance is based on work. Mm -hmm. If we don't work, We don't make enough money to qualify. So uh, let's face it. So that was two years ago. So I'm already like 73 years old. So that's tough as it is because everything is so youth oriented. 
even the parents are 20. The kids are 20 and the parents are 22. Excuse me. Uh, it's, it's all about let's be young. Let's do this. Anyway, I think um, I think that's why you know this podcast is so important because the narrative is so it is you we're youth obsessed. Currently, you've got women you know stand up and say you know we're anti ageism, and there's just one voice or two voices or three voices or four voices. And the power I think of this podcast is really there's more voices and there's going to be more and more voices coming forward. And when you have a number of women, a lot, a lot of women across the world saying, hi, I'm so-and-so and I'm over 50. Then you're actually changing a narrative that exists. And, and more of us should do, more of us should definitely do that and say, whoa, dudes, whoa, whoa. And I think that we shouldn't let anyone make us feel less than we are. I totally, totally agree with you. I think at the end of the day, this is about us now taking back our power, showcasing, you know, ourselves and other people in terms of this is what women look like of this age group and beyond, you know, we are, I mean, I'm 59, right? I'm 59. I you look great. Thank you very much. I'm, you know, I've started a podcast last year, you know, I'm, I'm starting my business last year. I never thought I would, but here I am. I'm not a, you know, a typical 59 year old. I'm nearly 60. Come on. But I have the enthusiasm, the creativity, uh, the energy to actually stand up for who I am and be very proud of my age. And I'm not going to let allow anyone to dismiss me from the idea of this podcast again, Patrika, is that no one should be dismissed. And this is why we're showcasing all these beautiful women, including yourself. Thank you very much. I think it's also important. One of the things is that we as women should mm -hmm. never, ever talk down or belittle or insult other women. Mm -hmm. There's enough Ita. people in the world that are going to do that. Compliment somebody on the street. Just walk. I mean, people think I'm a whack job because I go by and go, Wow, you look fabulous. That's a great dress. And I just keep going. You know, that impacts somebody over there. You mm -hmm. know, even a guy, you say, oh, you look hot, hot, hot. Sorry, I'm married, though, but you're hot, hot, hot. You just have to be, you know what? First of all, with age comes the fact, a freedom, a yes. freedom. You Absolutely. Know, uh, you know, it's so take it, use your freedom and use your power. That is so important to me. I, um, I don't want to get... I will talk about it in the future. Um, you just have to enjoy life. I play golf with the Lady Duffers, all of which are over 50. We have a great time and we have cocktails and have even a greater time. So, mm -hmm. uh, um, I do Pilates. I love that visit. It's less stressful on your body. Uh, so like yoga or Pilates, um, keep just because we're having age and number doesn't mean our body has to be that way. Keep your body in tone and stuff like that. And don't let anybody tell you you can't do that. Get on the bicycle and go for a ride. Go for a hike. Yeah. Take the dog, whatever. Just, you know, and go places, meet people. You know, yeah, if absolutely. you go out to dinner, if you go out to dinner and somebody's sitting next to you and they look pretty good, you just say, what a lovely couple. You look terrific. You start a conversation. Mm -hmm. We must be open and, but kind. We must be kind to each other, but especially to ourselves. I totally, totally agree with that. And I just think that, um, you know, we do need to be nicer to everybody else. We need to be kind to everybody else. We need to be, you know, tolerant of everybody else. And I think, as you said, there's enough crap in this world, right? We don't need to add to it. We need to ensure that we bring the best that we can. And, and you're right, Patrika, when we come of age, this age, which is great, we actually have the freedom. I've, I've got a greater freedom now because I don't care what anybody else thinks or what I'm going to say it. next. Don't care yeah. what anybody else says. You just take care of you. But yeah. be nice and kind to everyone yeah. else because you got a lot of life left in you. Don't think, oh, I'm older now. I've got to wear a navy blue polyester dress wherever. Mm -hmm. Oh, hell no. Hell no. Hell no. <laughs> I love that. I love that completely. <laughs> um, so we're talking about the present. You're saying at the moment there isn't a lot of work because of the writer's strike. Yes. Do you have any projects that are coming up, you know, in the future? 
Well, I'm getting ready to do a podcast, but it's a podcast on crime. So it's mm-hmm. going to be a mystery and a crime, crime solving and things. So, and uh, I, I, I won a couple of awards from the independent series awards and this is where they're going to do it because they just opened the audio and i as i'm talking to them i'm going didn't this used to be called radio (laughs) (laughs) and they go what (laughs) yes yes years ago we had serial dramas on the radio and who the the shadow knows and all that you know so it's it's so funny that everybody wants to be 20, but everybody's going back to what we enjoyed at, yeah. at, at this point. And we Absolutely. can make it better because we remember some of the things that they don't even think about. So Absolutely. You can add that that experience in and that knowledge in as a as an add-on, and probably a freebie as well, right? <laughs> so um okay, so yeah. was it was there a trigger point at, at 50 at all for you, or you just kind of breeze through the various decades and you know? Frankly, it was just another number. Yeah. Um, and so, and and that's what it should always be. Uh, yeah. I I didn't suddenly go, oh, I'm 50. Now I have to walk like this. I have mm-hmm. to be like this. And I have to mind my P's and Q's and say, you know. Yes. Uh, not happening. I, no. uh, you're my type of woman. I, I like that approach. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's look at um, the bonuses. So what five tips would you give to anybody who's under 50? Under 50. Uh, again, the same things, be kind, be aware, know what's going on, but most importantly, be kind and compliment each other. Uh, just, just make sure that you're living your life to the fullest and that you're enjoying everything that is around you. That would be the first one. The second thing was don't let anybody get in your way. If you have a dream and you want it, you have to go after it. You may, along the way, the road may suddenly branch out and you go, wait, maybe I, Let me go see what this is about. There's nothing wrong with that. You haven't given up your dream. You're just growing. So as we grow, as we age, we find, oh, that's kind of interesting. Maybe I'll go learn to paint over there. That's it. And the next thing you know, you're creating, you know, cards and things. Just take the roads as they come. Don't get to a road and go, oh, God, I can't go there. I can't go there. I have to keep going straight. I have to keep going. Fear. Three, never be afraid. Never Mm -hmm. be afraid. There's always a way it may kind of stop you and you have to look at it just a little bit and go, I'm going this way this time. Cause that's a new adventure. Approach everything as a new adventure and so much fun. But remember there are U-turns. I'm not really liking that road. So I'm going back down here, but let me try this one too. Try everything. Mm-hmm. I just cause it makes you grow and you find other things that you're more aware of or that you want to do. And in our society, everything is constantly changing. So absolutely change with it, do what you want to do. But if you're content on your road, stay there. Nobody can tell you, you can't just stay there as long as you're happy because Mm. life is short. I I heard one time people always go, you only live once. That's bullshit. Uh, Maybe I shouldn't have said that word, but you live every single day. Mm -hmm. You only die once. Wow. In yeah, powerful, absolutely. Just remember that you live every day. That is true, but, and I think we should all remember that we live every day. Every day, you only die once. That's so true. make sure it's the best life that you're having, the best time, and that you're going for it. Um, and I, I don't, I don't want that to sound Pollyanna ish, but it is. There are roadblocks. There are financials. There are husbands. There are children. Things like that. But find that hour or two or three that are yours, that are yours as you grow and you marry or whatever. And if you stay single, there's still some problems about finances. I understand that. I went through all that, too. But one thing I will tell you that I I would tell somebody that age, too, is get 52 envelopes and number one to 50, one to 52 and put them in a box. And on day one, you pick up week one, you pick it up and you go, whatever that number, if you don't put them in order, just put them in a box. So I picked up the 35th week. So I put $35 into that envelope and put it away. Mm -hmm. Next week, I pull out one. It's 42 or 42 week. I put $42 in it. By the end of the year, you have a lot of money 
for Christmas, a vacation, or whatever you want to do. That's your money. That's nobody else's money. That's your money. That so, is such a beautiful idea. That's lovely. It, it, it just keeps, it's got a little a little stash for you. Now, if you're married and you have children and stuff, it's still a little staff going, we can afford a vacation because I did this. Mm -hmm. And then next week, the next time, you, the next year, you start all over again. That way you have a personal little savings. And God forbid that there is something unfortunate happen. You've got like 80 or 90 or 100, 300, $400 over here for emergency right away. But that you really should never touch until the end of the year when you want to take that vacation. What a lovely, lovely thought. What a lovely, lovely idea. Was that number four or was it, I got lost? Was it I have no five? <laughs> I told you I just started talking. You can give me one or two more then as an added bonus then. Uh, okay, <laughs> well, um, you know what? Don't put off today what, you, you know, what you could do tomorrow. Do it today. Uh, again, live every day. Uh, if you want to go on vacation, go book those that vacation and stuff. Um, uh, I... Uh, I worked so much, so my vacations were very limited. I didn't do a lot of traveling, though I've been to Austria for an event, or I've been, to, I filmed in Romania. I took, I performed in Edinburgh um, and took time to go to uh, London and stuff. I, I would have liked to have traveled more, but I'm not a woulda, shoulda, coulda person. Um, so I just, now I'm going, well, I, I'm not doing anything right now. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's have a fun time. Let's figure out what's happening. Uh, I think COVID kept all of us prisoners virtually we did two years of time um to be safe and stuff and uh so now it's time to live 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 <laughs> absolutely <laughs> absolutely i could listen to you forever so the, th the three tips to anyone who is over 50 what would you say to them don't get in your own way the first mm -hmm. thing just because you're over 50 doesn't mean that you can't do it go do it you know and if you don't like doing it change your mind and do something else start an exercise class start a book club start do anything that you like to do go join a knitting club there are, are uh, so many places to go and do and do. you know what um they have grandma days at schools and though you, you you're at 36 you can be a grandma let's face it uh mm -hmm. so but you can go to a school and read stories to kids. And, you know, there's so many things that we can do. Join a ladies duffer club, learn how to golf, go to a bowling club. I mean, there's so many activities that we can do. So that's important. Um, and again, if, if the age comes up or, or we get older, that doesn't stop us from dreaming. Mm -hmm. If suddenly you go, I really always wanted to do that then go do it. Don't let that, that thought escape for you. Go do it. Again, you can, you know, you live every day, die once. Mm -hmm. Don't, and don't be a woulda, coulda, shoulda. Like I said, oh God, if I'd done that, I could have had that role. Or, oh, if I, we'd gone there, I could have done. No, that's, that's garbage in the past. Right now, yeah. you're just looking at what's in the future and it's all in front of you. Absolutely. And Absolutely. let's face it, ladies, we're not 20 anymore, so we don't have to worry about our period. We don't have to worry about all that crap. Let's go for <laughs> it. But if you're having sex, wild sex, crazy sex, it's condoms, condoms, <laughs> condoms. Okay, there's one more, one, one more tip. On and one 50. more. And if, you, and, if you, and, and if you don't have anybody over 50, buy yourself that personal vibrator. Have yourself a hell of a good time because you don't have to worry about anybody and it's all private in your room. Just have a hell of a good time. Don't stop living. Don't stop worrying. But And you know what? To hell with what other people think. Enjoy yourself. And sometimes it's good to just go, Whoa, yippee. Go ahead. Just have a great time. Oh, such good, valuable <laughs> tips um, to women of all ages in terms of just go and enjoy yourself. Just have the best time, but don't hurt anyone. Yes, that's the and be kind as always, as I say. So, well, this has been a really fun interview, <laughs> bit of a roller coaster for sure, but uh, it's been really exciting. And I was so looking forward to this. And I'm so glad that you agreed to do this podcast. Well, I'm grateful that you asked, but I, again, I think it's so important. Uh, and one of the reasons I thought it was great to do is I, if you look at me, as I said, I'm 75, when my options, when I go to act, because people in Hollywood know how old I am, 
So a lot of times everything they send me out for is for a 75 or an 80 year old woman. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I go in with ladies of that age with Mm -hmm. the white hair, more wrinkles than I have. And I've had no work. This is me. And because I'm heavy, I fills out everything. So it's good. Not bad, isn't Um, it? (laughs) Thank you. And I have good genes. My grandmother passed at 101. Uh, And um, I, I just... Again, living life every day because you never know. I've had several friends that I've lost recently. Um, so put your own age, your own mortality in front of you. Mm-hmm. Um, the unfortunate thing for me is my husband's 82 and was just diagnosed with Alzheimer's. So, oh, okay. so it's um, it's been a little rough lately. But you know what? My doctor and his doctor said to me, you can be the caretaker, but you are at a point where you can hire people because you still have life. Mm-hmm. And it's very important for you, Patrika, as the caretaker to take some time for yourself. So the cruise I mentioned, I will be going on my 50th anniversary without my husband <laughs> and someone will be taken care of. But that's what I'm saying. You you have to live every day because you only die once. And I... um. I, I can encourage everyone if they have this kind of problem to get help. And make sure you take care of yourself. Always take care of yourself first. Because if you're good, if you're good, you can take care of other people. So that's my best advice. Patricia, thank you so much for even sharing that. I mean, you've got emotional, and it's, it must be such a a weight. But thank you for sharing it because thank you. Well, it's so important. And that's, I encourage other women to participate in groups or tell your friends, get the support you need. And remember that you don't have Alzheimer's. And in order to make sure that he's okay, I have to be okay. Mm-hmm. So you and have to be okay. That is such a beautiful way to finish a podcast. Those beautiful words. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the You Are Not Invisible After 50 podcast. If you want to hear more from some amazing women who are over 50, who are kicking ass and making an impact, then don't forget to follow us right here on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Remember to subscribe, rate, comment and share with other women through your social media. Let's spread the word across the world that you don't have to be invisible after 50. Check out our other services on www.you'renotinvisibleafter50.com and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok and YouTube. And always remember that life doesn't end at 50. In fact, it's just beginning. But wait, we have even more to offer. Join us and tune in to our other podcast, Shamelessly Untamed, a transformative series that encourages you to embrace your true self and celebrate your uniqueness. Make sure to subscribe to Shamelessly Untamed podcast on other podcasts or Spotify. Don't forget to rate, comment and share with anyone who can benefit from its content. Explore our additional services at www.roaringahead.com and be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok and YouTube. We look forward to you connecting with us. Thank you.